Okay, so in this video we're going to be going over what metathalamus is and what are the structures of the metathalamus and then of course what are the structures of the epithalamus. Now the epithalamus is a little bit more dense than the other components of the diencephalon but I've kind of zoomed in on the three most important components of the epithalamus. But for now, let's start with the metathalamus. The metathalamus is composed basically of the medial geniculate body and the lateral geniculate body. And the way these these are our nuclei, these contain our nuclei for our special special sensation, which is visual and auditory. And the medial geniculate body, remember the M and it stands for music. So the medial geniculate body is to do with the sensation of hearing or auditory. And this auditory sensation is by which of our colliculi, superior or inferior? It's a question. Okay, it's by the inferior colliculus. So the medial geniculate body is indeed connected to the inferior colliculus by the arm of inferior colliculus. And then the um, fibers that actually come out are known as the acoustic radiation. Um, in terms of the lateral geniculate body, because it starts with L, remember that it's to do with light. And our lateral geniculate body would be connected to our superior colliculus, which is to do with vision. And that's our lateral geniculate body, and it's connected to our superior colliculus via the brachium for superior colliculus. That's all you need to know for metathalamus, but if we start to look at epithalamus, it's a bit more complicated. Now, the um, acronym here is HEPI. Um, and it's an acronym or mnemonic, I don't know. So HEPI, H stands for Habenula Commissia. E stands for epithalamus. P stands for the pineal gland. And the other P stands for the posterior commissure. So we've had the habenula commissure. Now we have the posterior commissure, as well as the pineal gland, as well as the, um, the pretectal area. Now, you might be hearing some of these terms for the first time. But I'll try and explain where they are. So the habenula commissure, let's talk about the habenula commissure. The habenula commissure is basically composed. Do you remember something called the stria medullaris thalami? It was that line that was going. It was that line that was going from the from the thalamus, basically. And our stria medullaris thalami was going kind of um, along the upper curvature of the thalamus uh, or you could say the stria medullaris thalami is between the superior surface of the thalamus and the medial surface of the thalamus and this stria medullaris thalami goes in a posterior direction and goes in a looped structure and that loop structure is known as your habenulae or your habenula commissure. Now um, the word you need to remember is siraha like the Sahara Desert, but not Saraha. Now, that's because your um, stria medullaris thalami then goes to compose the habenula commissure. And your stria medullaris thalami continues posteriorly to form the habenula trigone. The habenula trigone is basically a triangular shaped structure. And the habenula trigone contains your habenula nuclei. And these are your medial and lateral groups. Just like the mammillary bodies have medial and lateral nuclei, so do the habenula commissure nuclei. Now, um, these nuclei, medial and lateral, receive afferents from specifically the septal area. Specifically the septal area and from the hypothalamus. And a way to remember this is to focus on SH and Siraha or to think commissure spelled with an SH instead. So you're getting afferents from the septal area and the hypothalamus, which are going to your medial and lateral nuclei. Okay, fair enough. We know what the inputs are. What about the outputs? Well, the axons that come out from the medial nucleus, the medial nuclei of the habenula commissure, they go in the direction or they go to your nuclei interpedancularis and they form something known as your... Uh, wait, by the way, it is your nuclear interpedancularis. It's a new interpedancular fossa between the cerebellar peduncles, also known as your posterior perforated substance. And this forms your fasciculus habenular, in, fasciculus habenulo interpedancularis. 
just something to note. The last thing I want you to know is that the um, medially converging hepanulae form the, the hepanula trigone converges medially to form the hepanulae and there would be attached, like right here would be attached to your epiphysis, which is another name for pineal gland. Pineal gland regulates your sleep-wake cycle, it secretes melatonin as well as serotonin. Now let's go on to the posterior commissure. I've put a big ADJ there because I want you to know that the habenula commissure is adjacent to the posterior commissure and for the posterior commissure you don't have to know a lot of understanding you just need to know the six structures that the posterior commissure connects on the brain's hemispheres and it connects six structures which I remember with the word S-P-I-I-N-T and the most important thing that the posterior commission connects are the superior colliculi, which are for our vision sensation, for our vision basically. And then your next thing are your posterior group of thalamic nuclei that it connects, then your interstitial cells of Cajal, then your interstitial cells of the posterior commission, then your nucleus which I'm not sure which nucleus that is. I'm sorry, you're going to have to Google that yourself. Um, then it connects your tectal area, tectal nuclei. Now we're moving on to our pretectal area. In our pretectal area, there's only two major things that you need to know. First, you need to know the nuclei found here. Second, you need to know where, where it receives input and where it gives output. So the nuclei are basically anterior and posterior, as well as nucleus olivary, as well as um, nucleus tractus opticus. So no, not nucleus olivary. So it's nucleus olivary and nucleus um, tractus opticus. Now the other thing I want you to know about the pretectical, but the most important ones are your anterior and posterior nuclei. Now the other thing I want you to know about the pretectal nu um, nuclei is that they receive fibers or they receive information from the eye and they give output to the um, basically to the edinger westphal nucleus or the parasympathetic nucleus of the oculomotor nerve or your nucleus accessorius nervi oculomotor.